All right, welcome back to the Daily Fantasy Flex podcast. It is Monday night. Uh, we're, ro- we're rolling back uh, our guest. We got Brandon Hopper, uh, who who joined me last week for his inaugural pod for Fantasy Labs, and uh, he liked it so much that he uh, he's back this week. Brandon, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm excited to be back. Hopefully, uh, I- I've got a few improvements I'm making from last time, so so uh, we'll see how that goes. Improvements are always good. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk Tuesday slate. Um, before we get into uh, sort of the nitty gritty, I want to uh, give a couple show notes. Um, so uh, the uh, there's two games on Monday night, uh, which we were recording on, uh, that uh, got postponed due to rain. Uh, Baltimore, Minnesota, um, and, and then Chicago uh, also got postponed. So uh, Chicago, San Diego got postponed. Um, so those uh, those games are going to be transferred over to um, the next slate. Uh, so I think that's uh, something you need to to notice is that the even though the pitchers are going to move over to the next slate, so the slate that we're about to talk um, is going to include uh, Lester and all of these guys that we're going to pitch tonight. Their salaries, um, since they already released their salaries the night before, uh, being tonight before the games were postponed, um, they obviously have a different salary than they were before. So even though, um, you know, Lester has the exact same matchup, theoretically, um, he actually has a different uh, pricing or salary on these sites. So uh, it is going to affect his value in a vacuum. Maybe it doesn't affect it enough where uh, it really changes your mind on whether he's good in cash or tournaments. Uh, that's, that's for you to decide. But um, it, it does sort of change the outlook of the slate because – his salary is different. So uh, same matchups, but uh, I do think it is important to, to note that it's not exactly the same uh, because of those salary changes. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely monitor that for sure. Uh, quickly looking at uh, sort of just uh, high team totals uh, and low team totals like we do to start. Uh, it's obviously a course field slate. So that is always the one that dominates. Uh, so Colorado is the highest, uh, highest implied team right now, they're at 5.9. Arizona's at 5.3. They're the team that's based in Colorado. Uh, Boston is up there as well at 5.1, so sort of a sneaky third team that's above five, uh, even though they're not playing at fours, I think is interesting. Uh, and then the low teams right now are the Dodgers, uh, the Royals, and the Mariners. They're all at 3.4. Uh, we don't have lines on uh, some of these games, especially the Chicago one. They're always sort of late with their lines anyway, uh, but especially because – um, you know, we just had a pitching change. Uh, Kyle Hendricks was supposed to pitch, but they're moving Lester since uh, moving Lester to tomorrow since the game got postponed. So that obviously is going to affect the line. Um, so definitely monitor all that for sure tomorrow because I assume that we're going to see uh, quite a bit of line movement from opening uh, to, to close. Um, all right, so let's get into our uh, into our regular segment. So we're going to uh, talk about a couple intriguing pitchers. Uh, and we'll just kind of, uh, you know, rotate back and forth with, uh, with some guys. So we're, we're going to give two. Uh, and, and Brandon, I'll let you start. Give me, give me one intriguing picture first. Okay, so the first guy I, I uh, have jotted down is Masahiro Tanaka. Uh, he's 9,800 on FanDuel. Um, the Royals don't strike out a whole lot, so that sort of limits his upside. Um, but they don't hit the ball well off righties either. Uh, he's been getting a ton of ground balls this year. Uh, more so in the past years anyways. Um, and his home run per fly ball rate is significantly down too, uh, which helps uh, which helps in that stadium, obviously. Um, his miles per hour is down in his past two starts, but he's thrown less and less fastballs. So, I mean, we look at the advanced stats and, and we see that his MPH is down. Oftentimes you need to dig a little bit deeper and see, you know, what's causing that well. He's not throwing as many fastballs. Um, his fastball, his fastball velocity is down a little bit, um, but it's kind of it's kind of on par with where he's been in the past seasons. So it's not the drastic decrease that that you see when you just see the advanced stats. Um, he's relying on the split finger fastball a lot more, um, which doesn't have the same velocity as, as a four speeder or a four four or two. Um, and, uh, and that's his best pitch. So um, he's kind of going there more. Um, he's going to that split finger fastball more. And, uh, and, and I think it's paying off for him. It's just, it's just showing a little bit decrease in velocity, which isn't necessarily a big deal when, when you dig deeper into it. 
Yeah, um, yeah, he's uh, he's an interesting uh, case. Yeah, his his advanced stats are pretty good as far as the bat of ball um, stats. Uh, people are not getting great contact on him so far this year, uh, which is encouraging. Uh, obviously, I, I do think he's a interesting guy for tomorrow. My first guy that I'm going to talk about um, is going to be Smiley, uh, Drew Smiley for Tampa Bay. Uh, so yeah, so I think he's sort of in an, an intriguing spot. Um, I. Don't I don't think the matchup's the most amazing one in the world. He's facing Seattle. Uh, it, it's a decent pitcher's park um, in Seattle, but uh, you know, C- Seattle's uh, got some. Uh, it's not the easiest matchup in the world. Is going against those batters, um, and, and I sort of think he's interesting just because of where he is in his price point. Um, he's only four hundred dollars uh, cheaper than Jacob Degrom, um, which I think is going to make it really tough for people. Um, to not just pay up for DeGrom. I, I think that DeGrom's more of a household name. Smiley's sort of come on um, lately, and uh, th- this year he's more known by the advanced stats community and sort of the the hardcore DFS community, I guess. Whereas Jacob DeGrom, you know, is pitched for that Mets staff that um, obviously went to the went far in the playoffs last year. Um, so I, I think that people are really going to have trouble um, – not just paying that extra four hundred dollars, um, and, and maybe they should. I mean, I think Degrom's in, um, you know, an okay spot. Um, I, I don't love the Dodgers matchup. Um, I, I think I think the matchup is probably about similar with with Seattle and uh, in LA. Um, so I, I think it's pretty close uh, between the two. But I think Drew Smiley is going to be a lot lower ownership uh, in tournaments. So uh, for that reason, I think he's sort of intriguing in, in that re- for that reason. Yeah, definitely. And anytime you can get a little piece of the smiley versus smiley action, I like I like him a little bit. Smiley Wiley, yeah, smiley Miley. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, give me your second guy that you're intrigued by. All right, so it, you know we were talking before, and it, it was Hendrix, um, but uh, but I, I'm I'm going over to Lester. Um, I liked I liked Kendrix because or Hendrix because. Uh, because he was going to allow us to get some of those Coors Field bats in. Uh, Lester doesn't do that, but he's a lefty going against San Diego. And as we know, that that's about all we need to know. Uh, he K's about a batter in inning, and the Padres with one, about one in every three at-bats, about 30%. So um, the K predictor has him at 7.8 Ks for tomorrow. It's the highest on the slate. Um, and his advanced stats are good too. It's 13 feet less. Um, opponents are hitting ball 13 feet less in the last two starts. And his hard hit percentage is down 7%, which I, I like that more than the 13 feet myself. Yeah. Uh, my second guy is uh, Joe Ross. Uh, I really like him mostly just because of his salary. Uh, I, I do think that he has some risk to him. Um, and uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But uh, just sort of going over his – um, he, the, the good parts about him. So he uh, does have uh, fairly good good um, um, stats for a guy who's seven seven on DraftKings. Uh, he's got a one point one one two WHIP. His, his strikeouts per nine is is decent. It's at eight point one K nine. Um, and then if you sort of factor in his opponents, uh, he actually has fairly decent strikeout potential for uh, the slate. Actually, uh, so our K predictor um, actually has him pegged as. Uh, just below Lester as the guy uh, projected for the second most strikeouts. Um, his uh, his line, so uh, Detroit's implied to score 3.6, which isn't like the most amazing sort of, uh, you know, opponent line, but, um, you know, the lowest teams are at 3.4, so it's not like it's just super above that. Um, again, I, like I don't, I don't love um, Ross as, as a pitcher necessarily um, just in, in a vacuum, um, but this is just more sort of that – it is a Coors field slate, and we're obviously going to want to get those sort of bats in. Um, not only that, but uh, even moving down to um, Boston, and um, there's just going there's going to be a lot of high implied teams. Uh, White Sox, uh, Texas is a huge total. Um, th- there's just a lot of bats that we're going to want to fit in. So I think it's going to be you know, can you find a guy that you can stomach at the low price point that's going to allow you to uh, to roster those guys? And I think Ross is my favorite of of the guys that are. Um, you know, maybe eight, nine K or below, or maybe under 10 K. Um, he's sort of my favorite spot. Um, not, not the greatest pitch in the world, but, um, 
for, for what he represents in this slate, I, I like them. Um, so let's give us a, a fade of the day, and I think you're you're going to go somewhere with this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's important to note that we're looking at different sites. You know, you take DraftKings, I take FanDuel. So so uh, there are there are cases to play Joe Ross on DraftKings, and, and I've got a case to to fade him um, at FanDuel. And most of it's because uh, because of the advanced stats that we've got at Fantasy Labs. Uh, his strike ratio is down 2% in the last 15 days. Uh, his opponents, his, his, the distance he's given up, though, is 228 feet. That's 30 feet up from, um, for, from where he's been in the last year. Yeah, uh, they've been crushing him. <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> and, and it doesn't really stop there. I mean, hard hit percentage is up 9%. Exit velocity is at four miles per hour. Um, I just don't like him tomorrow, especially with the with the increase in price. I mean, he's been giving us a little bit. Uh, he's been exceeding points on Fanduel, mm-hmm. uh, but now he's got. They bumped up the salary um, six hundred dollars from the last from his last start. Um, so I won't be on him tomorrow. Yeah, it's interesting. So while you were uh, while you were talking, I uh, got curious because um, you know that, that was I did notice his advanced stats, and you know we sort of talked off air that he was going to be your fade, and um, I, I I sort of agree that there is a lot of risk um, to him. Uh, and again, it's sort of just the price point drafting. You have to take two pitchers. Uh, but while you're talking, I looked up his Babbitt because I thought it would be high. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the guys are hitting him hard, and maybe he was just getting a little lucky. His Babbitt's low though; it's two fifty. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe there's more to that story. Um, I, I'm not sure because I mean he's he's had solid games lately, um, and he's in a good spot here. Um, the advanced stats say that guys have been making really good contact, so um, I, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe he's gotten uh, maybe it has nothing to do with luck, and you know maybe it's just he's just due for some regression that guys are going to. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer, but I, I think that's sort of an interesting thing to uh, to maybe look into a little bit more and figure out where you stand on Joe Ross and. Um, you know, you can uh, decide from there where, what you want to do with him. Because I think he is sort of a uh, uh, going to be an important pivot spot for, you know, finding these these elite bats. Uh, quick before we move on to, to uh, the bats, uh, my fade is going to be DeGrom, um, actually. So uh, he was my fade last time, uh, and the reason was because of his concerning uh, velocity decrease. Um, he had uh, – and down um, a little low to a little below two miles an hour um, in his recent velocity, and that continued last game. Um, and he's actually now to he has lost uh, two point one miles per hour, so over two miles per hour um, in in recent velocity. And we saw him get shelled last game. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm predicting that. I, I don't think LA is a great great matchup by any means. Um, and I think for the slate that is not an amazing slate as far as pitchers go, um, he, he's a fine option. Um, and I would probably be more okay fading him if I had some better pitching options. It does make me a little uncomfortable. But the advanced stats still concern me. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's hinting towards, um, you know, he's just still getting better. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is. But, uh, you know, he just hasn't really looked the same since um, since last year. And, um uh, before his injury last year, rather. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I, I'm just going to sort of not pay that price um, until I sort of see it from him, um, whether that's a good move or a bad move. That's sort of what – you have to make a stand on something. That's going to be the stand I make. Yeah, no, I, I like that call. Um, it didn't didn't he miss some time with, some, with an injury earlier this year? Yeah. I needed last year too. Um, and I figured it would take him a while to sort of get back to his regular uh, – um, regular stuff, but um, yeah, I mean at, at ten five on um, on Fanduel and uh, you know expensive on DraftKings too. It's just sort of hard to stomach that sort of risk, um, especially when you don't love his stuff at that price point. Especially when you want to get cores batters, and it's just hard to pay that price. Uh, so I, I think I'm going to fade him um, and maybe revert to Smiley and. Um, and I, I really like Lester, like you said, um, and, and Ross as well. So those are going to be my main core pitchers. And, you know, maybe I'll regret fading to Grom, but uh, maybe not. So we'll see. Uh, let's move on to batters. Uh, you want to give me your first intriguing batter? Yeah, so uh, it's Nolan Arenado. 
Um, of course, you got to get. A, I think you have to get a piece of the Coors action tomorrow, even if you. I mean, unless you want to totally stay away from it, which I mean, you can make the case, but I, I don't necessarily think it's smart tomorrow. Um, I like Arenado. He's right on right, so that should uh, that should give us a little bit of uh, ownership decrease. I think also when you're trying to stack the Rockies, it's so easy. Like when you're trying to pick, okay, who do I leave out? It's so easy to leave him out because he's so expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, sort of a popular thing to do nowadays is go like two, three, five, six, or one, two, three, five, um, and, and skip Arenado. I don't think we should tomorrow though. Um, he's got an ISO of 308, which is top 10 on the slate. Um, so he's, he's right on right, but he's still producing, um, at that clip, um, his hard hit percentage is up, his distance is up, um, 4% on the hard hit, 18 feet on the distance, um, exit velocity is up. So, um, yeah, I like him a lot tomorrow. You like Arenado? Oh, I love Arenado. Every slate. It doesn't matter who he's facing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I obviously love him in a core slate. Um, I, but I love him if he was... I don't know, hitting uh, on the moon or something. I don't know. I, even though that would be a good spot too. Because of, yeah, I think that would be good. I'm yeah. not sure how gravity works or anything. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I love Arenado uh, all the time, but especially in cores. Um, and especially actually when he's priced up because you could potentially get him at low ownership. He was about 10% tonight on sort of uh, – um, on on most slates that I saw, so that mm -hmm. I, I think that was lower than he should have been, uh, which leads me to my first guy, uh, Charlie Blackman is going to be the the guy that I'm looking at. Um, so yeah, so sort of compared to where um, uh, some of these guys are, if you're looking at Arenado, you're looking at Cargo, you're looking at Trevor Story, these guys that you want to fit in for Colorado that all have like crazy splits. You know, uh, Story's got 323 ISO, like you said, Arenado's above three, uh, Cargo's at 323 ISO versus uh, right-handed pitching and they get uh, Rubby, <laughs> who's uh, not a great pitcher, allows a lot of home runs and uh, is uh, you know, back in cores. So uh, I, uh, I think it's an interesting spot that people are going to really target these home run hitters. Uh, so I think that maybe Blackman might go a little under round. Uh, he was in single digits in most tournaments I saw tonight. Um, and I, I, so I, I like targeting him if he was just sort of um, just going to be lower than them and didn't really offer any other potential. That would be one thing. Uh, but I do think that he has some sneaky uh, stolen base potential. Yeah. He averages uh, 2.78 stolen bases per game. Um, that's usually not something that you're looking to target at, at a Coors Field slate. You're like, okay, I want home runs. I don't want stolen bases. Um, he obviously has upside of, of hitting a home run. Anyone at Coors with that is a semi-decent like athlete, you know, has potential to hit a home run of course. So he has that, but, uh, you know, I'm also adding in the factor that he could be a little under own and he could get a stolen base that on top of that. So there's a lot of upside for me there. At what I think could be a little bit uh, reduced ownership than probably where he should be. Um, so he's, he's a guy that I like out of the course guys. Uh, who's your, who's your second guy? So my second guy is Carlos Correa. Um, he's at 4,100 on FanDuel. Um, so I want to get your take on this, but I think I think the most highly owned guy tomorrow um, among shortstops is going to be Gene Segura, um, especially on Vandal. He's got a 95% bargain rating. He gets to lead off at Coors Field. We know that's a big bump. Um, I think lead off hitters at Coors Field are something like a positive two on the plus minus. Um, so we know that's good. People are going to play him, right? Um, so for just uh, – Four hundred dollars more. I'm going to take Correa. Um, he's right on right again. So against Bauer, so he should see even less ownership. Um, and he's one of the likelier shortstops to to hit a home run tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, he's squaring the ball up lately. Fly ball, fly ball mark is up two percent. Line drive up nine percent. Hard hit up six percent. Um, plus Bauer just came from the bullpen. This is this will be his third start, I think. Um, so. You know, how, how deep is he going to work into the game? Will we get to a bullpen early in the game, possibly? Um, what do you think about that Segura, though? you think he's going to be highly owned? I do. Yeah, for the reasons that you listed. Uh, he's underpriced, I think, um, sort of relative to where he should be for a, a, a Coors game. On FanDuel, he's 3-7, um, which is just sort of, uh, yeah, that, that's just that's just underpriced on uh, – on uh, on Fanduel, so yeah, I, I think that you're probably right that he's going to be 
pretty highly owned. I think Trevor Story will still be highly owned, um, even though he's more expensive just because he has that power. Um, but I think Gene Sakura is probably probably a little above him as the number one guy. But yeah. Who you got as your second? Your uh, yeah, so my second guy is uh, um, a guy um, that I don't think many people know of. He sort of uh, flies under the radar a little bit. His name is Mike Trout. Uh, he's an okay. He for? Yeah, he's an okay player. Uh, so, I, so I, I'm obviously um, in, in jest here, but I actually do think there's a little bit to the fact that I think he is a little flying, a little under the radar. Um, you know, there's been all sort of guys that have been getting MVP buzz. This is just sort of anecdotal outside of the fantasy, um, you know, sort of perspective on it. Uh, but you know, Bryce Harper is the biggest thing right now, and even like. Uh, other, some other East Coast guys, whether it's Donaldson or Manny Machado or, or these other guys that are getting a lot of MVP buzz, um, and rightfully so, having great seasons, obviously. Harper is uh, ridiculous. No one will even, like, semi-pitch to him. Um, but Trout, he's crushing lately. I mean, he's got uh, – he's been about a ball distance of 247 uh, feet, which is 19 feet farther than last year. Uh, he's hitting it. Uh, his active velocity is up. His hard hit percentage is up. Uh, he's been hitting line drives and, uh, and fly balls. So he, he's just making a ton of good contact and, and I think playing really well right now. Um, and he's actually a reverse splits player. I mean, slightly, um, he's actually kind of a no splits player, which I think the best players are no splits players. Um, I think that shows his talent that he really hits everyone crazy well. Um, but he is reverse split. So he's facing a righty. Um, so even though you, I, I'm not even going to count it as a positive that he has a positive split against righties versus lefties. Uh, it's just more of the fact that um, people probably wouldn't target him as much as, he, as if he were facing a lefty, uh, even though I don't think the data says that there's really anything to that. Um, so I, I sort of like facing guys who have reverse splits. Um, and I think for a guy like Trout, you really don't ever need to worry about splits. Uh, for him so uh not that i have to like really sell mike trout a whole lot but uh in a Coors field game uh, and with other guys with great matchups whether it is uh chris davis or um bryce harper or any of these guys um i think trout is still really good at baseball um, and still probably warrants you paying for him uh so he, he's my guy that i um i'm i'm team trout right now uh, cool. cool. Let's uh, let's give a couple value bats. So uh, I'll let you do Fanduel. Uh, give me one Fanduel guy. I'll give me DraftKings guy, and we'll go back and forth. All right. So every every day I wake up and I well, when I first look at the slate, I hope that Billy Hamilton hasn't seen a huge price increase. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's he's creeping up, but he's still only at twenty six hundred. Um, we don't really want to look at his distance. Um, when you're looking at advanced stats for Billy Hamilton, because he's not going to, he's usually not going to sneak one out of the park. Um, but we do see that he's hitting the ball harder. Um, his exit velocity is a little bit better. He's hitting the ball on a line more. Um, he's also seeing more ground balls, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for him because he puts so much pressure on the defense with his speed. Um, of course, the big thing that makes him so intriguing is that he's got stolen base potential. Um, you know, and he's and he's in the middle of a, a series against the Indians and Francisco Cervelli, who gives up buttloads of stolen bases. Um, Juan Nicasio, you know, to kind of, kind of counter myself, Nicasio hasn't given up any stolen bases this year, uh, but that, I I say that's going to change tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to get too much into that. I don't want to spoil what could be my stat or my bold call of the day. I like it. Yeah, that's. That's a, that's a tease. We'll just leave it at that. Cool. Uh, I'll give my first DraftKings guy, um, and it's a guy that I've uh, been pumping a little bit lately. Um, it's just really hard to find value on DraftKings, um, so you sort of just have to take it where you can get it, even if it's I'm being repetitive. But I think it's a guy who's still a value. It's Derek Dietrich, um, who's who's uh, batting for Miami. He bats a little bit lower in the order uh, than I would like. Uh, he's been batting. Uh, seventh lately he initially uh, was batting higher in the order when D Gordon went out but he's been bumped back a little bit uh, but still has good splits he's got 239 ISO versus right-handed pitchers I get that it's uh, even still a fairly small sample but uh, you know his stats are really good he's got 12 pro trends uh, of note on DraftKings um, and uh, I, I just think that he's underpriced he is dual eligible second base third base um, and it's been pretty consistent since he uh, since he took over I mean he's not 
He hasn't put up a huge game in, in a little while, but uh, it looks like he has a hit in 10 of his last 12 games, which is sort of going back to when uh, D. Gordon uh, went out with that uh, suspension. So uh, Derek Dietrich sort of really in any spot that he's hitting. Um, I, I do like Miami tomorrow um, in, in their spot, but um, regardless of batting order, he – um, I think he's a good batter, and he's sort of proven it to us. So uh, until they boost his price point, he's 3-3 on DK. I'm going to sort of just continue to roll him. He's a nice savings to let you get the uh, the, the cores, guys. Um, cool. Uh, let's go back to you. Let's get uh, another FanDuel. Okay, so I'm sticking with the same team. Uh, Brandon Phillips is 2,900 on FanDuel. Um, he's, uh, he's a reverse splits guy. Um, well, you could kind of call him one of those even slits guys. You know, he's good against both. He, uh, he's he got 330 versus righties, 318 versus lefties as far as the local goes. His ISO is a little bit better against against righties. Um, but his advanced stats are, are off the charts right now. 52 feet further on a distance category, 18% on the hard hit, six miles per hour harder. Um, and he's hitting the ball in the air 22% or 52% of the time in the last two, in the last 15 days, um, he's, he's, the ball's going in the air. Um, so that's good. It also helps, you know, going back to, back to Billy Hamilton, it helps to have that guy on base when you're batting. Cause if he's on first and you put one in the gap, I mean, you get an RBI when, when, you know, your average MLB baseball player isn't scoring on that. So um, there's that too. He's got eight pro trends. Um, that's tied for the second highest – or tied for the highest, sorry, about uh, second base on FanDuel for tomorrow. So I like Brandon Phillips. I like it. Uh, my other guy on DK, and again, it's sort of hard to find value. Um, I- I'm not sure who's going to start uh, at catcher for Colorado. I'm not sure if it's going to be Garneau or whether it's going to be Walters. Walters got the start tonight. Um uh, it's sort of hard to predict uh, Colorado um, lineups, and you know maybe Ben Paulson gets uh, gets a spot as well um, at at first base and outfield eligibility. Uh, my main point is that uh, if you can find guys, regardless of where they are in the order, uh, that are going to hit at this Colorado Arizona game, uh, I, I would play them. So um, you know whether it's Garno or Walters, um, I, I don't love Walters as a, as a player uh, in general. I, I don't think he's a very good hitter, but um, if you're talking sort of near minimum price, hitting at cores, um, I, you, you sort of just have to look at them. Um, so uh, definitely monitor lineups and figure out who's going to be in the lineup. But if there's going to be a guy that's 3K or less hitting at cores, there you go. There you go. It's my other FanDuel guy or my other DraftKings value guy. Uh, cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, we got a couple quick segments to wrap, wrap it up. Uh, let's, let's do a stack of the day. Who's yours? All right, so I'm taking the Reds. I've talked about a couple of them. Um, I don't think necessarily the Cincinnati stack's going to win you a GPP, but I think there's value there. Um, I talked about Billy Hamilton. I talked about Brandon Phillips. Uh, Joey Votto's another guy who's high in my player model. Um, you've got the you've got the high implied totals. Uh, what was it, 5.9 for the Rockies? There's a few 5.1s on the stack. The Red Sox are a good play. Um, the Diamondbacks, any, anyone in Coors Field is strong. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Reds. I, I see value there, and I, I know they're going to be low-owned. Um, 4.3 implied total isn't going to isn't going to scream, you know, stack, stack the Reds, stack the Reds. like it. Uh, my stack is going to be the Red Sox. Um, I, I, uh, I think it's interesting. You know, I, we don't normally have slates where we have three teams that are projected to score over five runs. Um, so I, I'm more just sort of interested in where ownership's going to be, um, you know, whether it's going to be spread fairly evenly across those three teams or whether people are really going to load up on Arizona and Colorado. Potentially Red Sox um, could be a sort of sneaky lower ownership team. I mean, it's a big slate, so I don't think they're going to be like un- – I don't think they're going to be like, you know, low owned by any means. But um, I do think they'll probably be lower owned than they would be on any other slate where they're projected for 5.1 runs. Um, yeah. so I just think that's important to note. Um, it's like, okay, um, they're projected 5.1 runs. Where is that going to put their ownership um, in this slate relative to another slate? And if you think that it's going to be a difference and significant, which I think it could be, uh, you're really, you're kind of all, of, you're getting value just from that fact alone um, on their team. So uh, Red Sox, I, I don't know. I don't think they'll be uh, low owned, but I do think they'll be relatively less owned than they should be. 
Um, and they obviously have, um, you know, great hitters. I mean, Ortiz, even though he's facing the left, he still has, uh, you know, really good splits. Uh, Jackie Bradley has, has been playing really well lately, even at the bottom of the order. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you definitely have guys that uh, that could play well. They're they're a little expensive, but less so than um, the cores guys. So uh, sort of a sneaky snack stack that probably isn't sneaky, but maybe so. Um, I, as much as that makes sense. Yeah, no, I can I can definitely see that being successful tomorrow. I'm interested though. Like, where do you like your spots in that? Who who do you like in particular? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of tough because, I mean, no one um, – like, normally if they were facing a righty, you would really like them. Um, but I, – so I, I sort of just kind of like everyone um, because even though they um, – even though they're facing a lefty, I, I don't think that um, the lefty they're facing, Linnea, is any good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he allows a ton of home runs. I think it was uh, – he has 1.8 home runs per nine. Um, so even though it's like a theoretical bad matchup against lefty, like not all lefties are – created equal obviously so um, even though it's bad splits against the lefty even if i was pitching lefty to ortiz he's still going to jack a home run i'm not saying i'm the pitcher that Manea is but um i do think it's sort of uh you need to weigh that the pitcher um when you're looking at these splits even though it's a negative split um sometimes it doesn't matter if the pitcher's not any good um so yeah so i like i like all the top guys i mean like ortiz bets handley um, I, I've always, I've liked Brad, Jackie Bradley for a while. Um, you know, he has fairly even splits against righties and lefties. So, um, yeah, I think you sort of target those top of the order guys and hopefully they go off for, you know, maybe six or seven runs and outscore the Rockies and the, and the Diamondbacks. Yeah. Well, you versus Manea, don't, don't sell yourself short on that. I mean, I've heard you're pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even left-handed, but, um, I could probably outdo them. You know, what would your what would your salary be on FanDuel? Probably, probably about five, six, just like him. It might be, yeah. I mean, what's the lowest it could go? Like five ish, yeah. So I couldn't I couldn't be much lower than him, honestly. Yes. Yeah, no, I like that Red Sox call though. they they've got a lot of pro trends. Just glancing at the at the lineups page for tomorrow, they've got tons of pro trends. Six, five, five, ten, ten for David Ortiz. Yeah. So 10, 10 for Ortiz despite facing lefty is sort of yeah crazy. yeah um give me a stat all right stat of the day you kind of I'm not gonna say you spoiled it earlier but you chimed in on Tanaka yeah uh so he's getting a lot of ground balls in the last two starts and his average batted ball distance is 168 feet in the last uh last 15 days so I mean put that together twice and that clears it barely clears the barely clear center or you know left center field like it uh my stat is sort of just um talking about how ridiculous she and carlos stanton is um so he is facing a right-hander uh which he has negative splits against um which is sort of misleading because he's not a negative player against right-handers he's just ridiculously positive against left-handers so my uh -huh. stat of the day is that his ISO differential um, is minus 299, which would qualify as the sixth best ISO out of all. Out <laughs> so it ha his negative, it, it would still be the sixth best outfitter of the entire slate. And then when it is actually, you know, you look at his ISO, which is supposed to be bad um, relative to where he is against left-handers, um, and it is still uh, just behind Harper and Cargo. And so many people, yeah, it's good. He's got such value because so many people know, you know, play him against lefties. Yeah, and then he, I'm going to play him against lefties. That's yeah. in here, you know, I'm going to play him against lefties. Yeah. And then they just sort of write him off against right. He's, he's still an elite play. Yeah, just behind Harper and Carter. Yeah, third best power hitter in the slate. Um, he's still has a higher ISO than Jose Bautista, who has positive splits against right-handers. <laughs> he has positive. He has a positive matchup. So does Mike Trout. Um, so does all these power hitters, and he still has a higher ISO despite the fact that his is 299 negatives. Oh, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Um, all right, let's end it with a bold call. All right, uh, you go first, you want me to? You got it, yeah. All right, uh, so as long as as long as long Francisco Cervelli's catching tomorrow, uh, Billy Hamilton swipes two bases. Oh, I like it. Two bases. And you figure, you know, getting on base is three points at least. So that's six yep. points if he does it twice. Um, 
and then you get 12 points. So that's 18 points uh, just in, in single slash walk in a stolen base. I don't know. Maybe he swipes second and third and home. I, I don't know. Wow, yeah, just he's gonna swipe all the bases. Yeah, he might, he might sure. figure out a way to swipe first too. I don't know if it, I don't know. Yeah, you got you got Boulder as your call went on. <laughs> I know. I better shut up before I'm get eight stolen bases. Yeah, uh, my bold call uh, is that Jacob Degrom is gonna get beat up again. Uh, he uh, was fairly high owned um, in, in his last outing, um, even though he was my fade, and I said I was concerned about the velocity. Uh, problems and he got beat up and I think it's going to happen again. Um, he's facing the Dodgers, which has the potential to do that. Um, so that's my bold call, which would be pretty bold considering there's not many great options tomorrow pitcher. Um, so yeah, so DeGrom's not going to do well against the Dodgers is my bold call. I like it. All right. Well, we will end it there. Uh, Brandon, thanks for joining me on this, this lovely Monday night talking Tuesday MLB, uh, getting into the, uh, the good days of MLB, you know, uh, NBA is getting uh, into their last round of the playoffs, and pretty soon we're going to have nothing but PGA and MLB just rocking every day. Yeah, that's how it should be. I like it. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for listening and watching as usual. Uh, good luck tomorrow in all your uh, tournaments and cash games, and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.